Boom. I think we're live, man. We're live? We are live. Hi, everyone. As you join us this Tuesday, this Thursday, this Wednesday <laughs> at 1 o'clock. Every Wednesday at 1 o'clock, except last week. Sorry about that. We missed last week. Um, I was just lying on my couch feeling sorry for myself. And then some of you fo actually phoned into our res and said, where's Dave? Where's Dave? And I was like, really? Some people actually care. And that was nice. So here we are. Why were you on your couch? I was just sad and I had a sore back and I just said, I'm just going to lie on the couch. Well, we're glad you're back. Oh, I back. see what I was. I, I kind of served that up for you. Anyways, go on. Yeah. So while we wait for everyone to come on and and then when we get down to the good stuff, when we resin, I was just going to walk around because there's always interesting stuff that might spark some questions. If you have any questions, just ask them. Jeff will try and shout them out to me and to Jasmine over there. Say hi, Jazz. Everybody. Hello, Jasmine. <laughs> we call her Jasmine Taz. And everyone needs a Jasmine because if you don't know where something is, you just ask Jasmine and she just finds it. Like, she just comes like, yeah. it's in the drawer. So, Hi the, Fabiola. Hi Fabiola. So over the past couple of weeks we've been filling up cracks in the wood grounds and it looks like we're totally full. Wow. So the next stage is just sanding and we're not going to do that in this live video because it's messy and no need. As you can see this one was sanded and it's perfectly flat. Julie missed you from White Rock BC. Oh thanks for missing me Julie. That makes me so happy. I couldn't believe that anyone was wondering, was ready at Wednesday at 1 o'clock. <laughs> and then what's this, Jeff? Alexis from Detroit's here. Oh yeah, and then we got a, a candy Skittle dish. The Skittle dish. And the, the final step was just to cut it with a table saw. Rip off this tape, cut it with a table saw. I don't know if we get to that today. But that's something interesting. Something else interesting mm -hmm. is how do you put bug, uh, butterflies and beetles, embed them in clear resin? Hi Mary. And we're going to be experimenting for more of that. Maybe we'll do a bit of prep work on it to show you. But again, if you have any questions, that's just some of the stuff that we're working on here. Well, we got Dominican Republic, Lady Lake, Florida, and Israel watching. That's awesome. Ah, the whole world. Well, we're here in southern Ontario, Canada, an hour west of Toronto. And it seems like the coronavirus is over. <laughs> or not, something. Let's not say that. No, no, no. Well, just all of a sudden, like, grandparents started hugging their grandkids just like last week and like just everyone just kind of like came back to life and it seems like we're okay. I'm getting there. Yeah. Hi, Schoenberg. Oh, and Debbie from Toronto and Debbie from Hello. United Kingdom, Costa Rica, Hi, Melanie amazing. from Toronto, Atlanta, Georgia. So cool. Cairo. Oh, amazing. Colorado. Neat. Holy, wow. Thanks for watching everyone. This Hamilton. So neat that people come watch. Cool. Well, what we're doing is until everyone gets on and we start the good stuff, we're just walking Grimsby. around showing some stuff that might prompt some questions. Sweet. This is a reusable mold. They come in really big sizes too for doing coffee tables and river tables. And we were just gonna fill, we're not gonna do this today, but just doing some prep work. So this is all gonna be clear resin over top of this beautiful piece of wood. So that's been worked on. Actually, a good question just came up. Mm -hmm. How did the balloons turn out? Oh, I, I hope no one asked. <laughs> it was terrible. They, well, you know what? I didn't come back the next day to resin again. I didn't come back for like four or five days. And I got kids, and I can't be thinking about balloons. And so all the air came out of it. So you got to be faster than we were. But it feels neat. Um, so that's what happened. Is I just didn't come back and do another coat fast enough just for it to keep its shape. So I, would, I, I thought maybe like three or four coats would be thick enough that when the air left, it would hold, hold its shape. But anyway. At least we know that the resin sticks to the balloon. That's uh, that's interesting. We'll, we'll try that again when we get a neat idea. But right now, unfortunately, it's on to the next project. Yeah, we lost forty hours of childcare, basically, a week. Right? Oh, yep, yeah, yeah. Do you want us to show what they're doing here, or is this for something else? This is very cool. Yeah, we got a video coming up Just that is. Um, it's like three different art, like, you know, if you have artwork that you get from the store, like prefab art, yeah. uh, we've got different ways of accentuating it. Basically, you can add some glitter to different aspects of the piece. Uh, we have another piece where we've embellished the water line of a, uh, it was a very big sneak peek because you know, I wasn't going to release this, but I will let you see. So you can have a nice piece here. 
So rather than just leaving it as a, you know, just a matte finish, you have a nice art resin finish there. It'll shine where the water, hey Liverpool, where the water will shine where the turtles are underneath. And SoCal, how's it going? And then this piece is also amazing because that used to be red flowers. And many of you know Dave's wife, Rebecca. Uh, well, here we go, boom. So that's what it used to be. And because maybe the decor or the color of your house has a different palette, so you just have to paint it over a little bit, add a little resin, and bada boom, you got yourself a whole new piece. It's beautiful, she did a great job. So look for that video that'll come out probably within the next month or so. Thank you, Jeff. No problem. Back to the listener questions. Cheryl Reynolds had one question and one comment. And her, your comment, Cheryl, if you're here, was, we've been just filling in cracks in wood and then losing all the resin and wasting so much resin in these deep crevices. So Cheryl said, why don't you fill it with sand first? And then the sand will just get saturated with the resin and hopefully just hold it in there. So we got some sand and that's what we're gonna do today. Great idea. So you don't waste your resin. Is that sand? No, it's like coarse sand. It's like sugar. So we'll do that in a bit. Taste it. Taste it. <laughs> no. Look at that. So I'm just filling this in with sand and then hoping that'll save a whole bunch of resin. So good idea, Cheryl. Why not use wood filler from Jill? Well, oh, like putty or glue? Ooh, we have plastic wood actually. That's a good idea. Yeah, if we can get in, that's a good idea too. Yeah. These are all great ideas. Hello, Ottawa. Hey, Ottawa. So we just finished putting some sand in there. Go like that, see? That's how you do it. Well, I don't want to be able to see it. That's awesome, Debbie. Okay. Or a hot glue gun from Artie Lad. Hot glue gun, all great ideas. Yeah, there's a lot, and obviously there's tons of different ways you can do it, and this is great because doing it this way is we're trying to open it up to you guys to offer some suggestions. We love it. Plasticine. Oh, yeah. All right, and Cheryl Reynolds was talking about aging wood. Mm. <sighs> Um, well, you just want it to be, I think that I have this wood meter. Next week, I'm going to bring in this wood moisture meter. You can buy them on Amazon. And I think you want the wood to be, it was either 4% or 6, that's 4% or 6% moisture. You don't want it to be completely, completely brittle and dry, but you don't want it to have enough moisture that will expand and contract. So, and how long do you age the wood? I want read that it should be for every inch you have it should be a whole year that seems crazy but like if you have a whole stump like you, they're saying you need to age it for many many years but jess do you know have any advice for how long to age wood yeah well if you have a stump like that it could take that long if you were just leaving it but you can find um if you have like a local lumber mill or a lumber yard they usually have wood kilns that you put it in for They'll put it in, they'll charge you to put it in there for like a day or two, like maybe a week if it's a big piece, and you come back out and it's all dried for you. Nice. So kiln, kiln wood is actually, is, seems to be a secret there. Yeah, and I didn't know you can go pay someone to do it. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. Lots okay. of different wood shops. So you just look in your local area for crafts people or lumber people who will do that for you. Nice. But the importance of having the wood dry is... Yeah, yeah. ultra important. Yeah. Ultra. Otherwise you just have cracks. The resin will crack over time. Very okay, cool. there's only. Is there any is resin mixed up? Yeah. Sure. Sweet. Thanks, Jeff. So Jeff already mixed up some resin. Nice. So this will be really easy to show you. So we're just gonna fill up these clear containers with resin, and then we can watch from the side how to make sure that it sinks. And I'll show you some things that don't sink. Enough. I'm sorry if I missed, a couple of people have written something and I was trying to film, so I missed a couple of questions. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is alcohol ink. That's one important feature. What do we have here? Ink sinker. Okay. What is ink sinker? So, and this is, uh, thank you. So this is just, uh, this is just, this is resin tint, which is different from alcohol ink. So I'll show you what doesn't work. Um, 
So resin tin is oil based, but it's safer, I guess. Alcohol is a solvent, so that just creates a lot of issues. But um, so this is oil based, and it'll just float on the top. And I'll show you with an alcohol ink. This is an alcohol ink. Was that last week, Julie? Uh, every Wednesday at one o'clock, Jill. Alcohol ink. So that's alcohol ink. Yeah. And they're both floating on the top. What the heck? Well, here's the secret. Alcohol ink that is white sinks. Here we go. Go on. There we go. So there's the ink sinker at work, driving the color down through the resin. Yeah. Or now you watch, I'll mix some, I'll mix the white with the color. That's right. That's wow, that's so cool. Look at that. That's actually really cool. And just to really show cool. you, this is, again, oil-based, this is oil-based resin tint with white, and you're not going to see the same stuff. See, right? it pops back up. So that's the resin tint on the left, and it won't drop down, whereas in the ink sinker, when it hits the alcohol ink, drives it down so you get those awesome tendrils. And that's why people do this beautiful Petri dish art. And it creates all that. And if you wait a little bit with the art resin, or if, with the resin, if you let it cure just a little bit, maybe before the 45 minute mark, you can really get well-defined tendrils in there. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I took some of the white alcohol ink, which is the thing that makes it sink, and I'm just mixing it with some yellow and we'll, we'll watch how it sinks that way. So this is white alcohol ink mixed with yellow alcohol ink? Yep. Cool. Julie, I haven't missed you. If uh, but you, you had a question about the rocks, uh, please just Ready? send it to me maybe after we're done this ink portion here. Boom, look at that. Oh, wow, dude. And you're gonna spin it a bit, see what happens. But you can just play and play and play. We're gonna add a bit of pink in here. So Dave's... So there's a bunch of pink, but again, I wanna add the white to make it sink. Yeah. There we go, now you see the ink, the pink ink coming down, mixed with the white. Let's put a bit more pink in there too. Oh, and then we have our, uh, so Jazz, this is our extras. Hello, Maria. Hi, Tanya. Oh, that's my mom. Tanya. Oh, yeah, Tanya Cohen. Hey. hi. Oh, she's saying hi, Jasmine. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hi to my mom, too, while we're doing this. All right. Is your mom watching? Uh, nope, probably oh. not. I, I'll have to get her to do it. Tell Any cheap mom? website for items. Um, for what? I, I, items. I don't know if that's items. I'm not sure. Oh, man, look. My wife bought me this shirt oh. today. I opened it and she said it's 25 bucks. And I said, why'd you pay 25 bucks for a t-shirt? I'm going to ruin it. And look at that. One day, half a day. Don't say, okay, I can't say it. So that, that was an interesting text. Sonia, a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah. Lots to learn. There's always, we're still like discovering all these different things that we love all different. If we could just sit and play all day, that's what we would do. Eh? I can't if we could do this. Oh, I'm sorry. Can that get, uh, I don't think so. Hey, Carol. Hey, Carol. Can you put resin on styrofoam or the resin gets too warm? But it depends on the density of the styrofoam. That's true. If it's like really light styrofoam, it'll get too warm and then as it, like, it melts it when it gets hot. Mm -hmm. But if it's like really heavy styrofoam, yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah, you can make sculptures of the styrofoam, carve it away if it's dense. If it's a really dense piece of styrofoam, carve it, and then you can resin it, no problem. We've had people do that with really big, big pieces of styrofoam. Okay, quick question, because it's all caps. How long before you can resin on acrylic painting? Um, good question. <sighs> you want to let it cure, especially if it's a light color, if it's white. No, yeah, how long? So you'll see the cure time is on the bottle of paint that you use. So, oh, really? Yeah, usually. So, oh, this one's proofing wrong. If I'm using white, if I'm not another white in my painting, then I let it sit for a week or two. Yeah. 
If yeah. I'm not using white, sometimes I even do it the same day. Yeah. I usually acrylic paint carries in like a day or two, so I'm just wait a day or two, or if it's white, let it be longer. Yeah. All right. Great. I added, I added that ink sinker to this one just as even though it had. Jill's saying it's hard to hear, so I'm going to try and go right up to everybody's face. I just, um, although I have, I'm sorry, Julie's trying to get at me here. I'm so sorry, Julie. It goes so fast. She had a problem with some bubbles, I think, on her rocks or whatnot. But Julie, mm -hmm. let's hang off on that, and let's, towards the end, I'm going to come back to you. If you can hang with me, um, I'll prompt you when Dave says there's a break, Okay. Okay. Sorry, Julie. So another thing we're doing today, we're gonna, we went over that, we went over all the questions. Um, we're gonna fill this wood crack, hopefully for the last time, now that there's sand in it. We're gonna, these wood faces are almost completely saturated. I just keep adding wood to them until they're just solid. Then um, Jazz is gonna show us some of the Petri dish stuff and then some jewelry blanks. So. Oh, cool. Jazz, are you ready to talk? I just have to prepare this painting yeah, for resume. Okay, why don't you talk about Petri dish? So what are you doing to prepare it, actually? So I'm just, um, as quietly as I can, taping the bottom oh. and putting it up on stands. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, let's go to Jazzmatazz. We'll be back with Dave. Just need a little cup. All right, Jazz, remember, your mom is watching, so oh no God. pressure. That's a lot of pressure. No pressure, mommy's watching. All right, so what do we got? So here's our, it's like a regular Petri dish, you know, you, we have our kits. So that's just what we did in that, Dave showed that example way over there. Mm -hmm. This is a finished product in a normal kind of, uh, yeah, dish size. Yeah, so it comes out of the mold like this. But one problem that people have is that there's this little ridge along the edge here. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's this little kind of sharp ridge that just happens because of the like capillary kind of bonding that comes up the sides of each of the molds. So. Capillary bonding. Well, like capillary. No, don't even. That was brilliant. I just let it let it sit. All That's right. good stuff. <laughs> capillary bonding. <laughs> That's what we should have titled this thing. Everybody's searching for capillary bonding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really so cool. Okay, so we got the ridges. To yeah. Fill that in really simply is just pour a little bit of resin in the back here, and then that'll fill it all in, and that little edge will keep it in. So then it'll be completely smooth ah. in the back. So you don't have to sand it or do anything like that. But the other thing you can do is you can use black resin. So oh. this originally looked like this, but I just used paint on this one. I painted the back of it black. I love it. And now it looks like fireworks or it's got that back black. I love it. And you can do it with any color. Um, How'd the pink turn out? I think the pink turned out good. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, oh that's wicked. So it went from it went from clear to the oh that looks so yeah. good. That looks cool. So oh, the, the easiest way I think I painted this just so I could show you what it looks like. But I think the easiest way is to just take some clear resin. You don't need very much. And uh how do finish this edge? Swap in some of our black resin tint. You could use alcohol ink as well. Could be either one. And then mix it up. So you got black paste. How many drops do you put in there? Mm, I don't know, maybe I put three or four would be good. I probably did a little bit more than that, but three or four is probably fine. Cool. And let's say you want to have this one be black on the back. Let's see, it's up there. You just pour this right on. Yeah, the pink on black looks amazing. Nice. This will look cool. So the result here is twofold. So you are not only, as you were mentioning earlier, not only are you eliminating that lip, yes. but you're also, the back of the dish is a little textured, so you're making that smooth as well. Yeah, if it was clear, you'd have a double-sided. You'd be able to see this, all this pretty stuff that happens. If, this is the back of the coaster, but it mm. looks beautiful. Right. So if you pour just the clear resin in that, yes. you'll just have... You'll hold on to that color. Yeah, you'll but, just have a double-sided... Smooth poster on all. Ah, uh, super! This is so good. I should have put that. In, should have put that in the Petri video. Jasmine. Well, these live videos are like discovering stuff. That's great. Yeah, this is so cool, eh? Forces us to do stuff every week. Yep. Just spread gently up to the lip. 
It won't it kind of hold it in, right? If you get a bit over the edge, it's not a big deal. You can take it off tomorrow. Yeah. Now and you it's can self see levels it. too, right? Exactly. So. so now you can see it's it's smooth over the top, kind of like almost like a dome, almost like you domed it. Wow. So no more sharp edge on the back. And you can, Jill. That is a good point. That is what we've usually done: is sand it off, sand yeah. off the lip. You can do that. And if it's a little rough, you just rub a little art resin all along that to smooth it out, make it nice and shiny. That is the usual way, but this is just something that Jasmine's proposed here and I think we'll take a look at the finished results next week because that is really cool. Yeah. Is this mixed up? No, we're not going to put a Liverpool football okay. flag out there. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's a Liverpool fan here. Like TFC, yeah, that's soccer. Yeah. Well, soccer, football, yeah, exactly. Is it on? I think, I think it is coming back. Sports are coming back around the world. I think soccer, soccer is happening. Soccer status. Yeah, uh, I think there's a tournament happening for the I don't know, the North American League, and then I think, I believe, yeah, out there with, uh, in Europe, they're doing some coming back as well. So anyway, sports are starting to come back. I'm just going to read this one out and see what we got. I filled a big vase I was making into a fairy garden with styrofoam peanuts and then covered with plastic from packaging resin seal. Uh, I missed the rest of it. Hmm. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was a long one. So Stephanie from Texas, who yep. does customer service. Hi, Stephanie. She mentioned a lot of people have been asking about finishing the edges of pieces. So there's lots of different ways to do that. There's easy ways and there's hard ways. I'll just tell you how I'm doing this one is I'm, I'm gonna let the resin go over the edge, just rub it in, and then I'm actually gonna sand the edges and then paint it black. That's gonna be my process. Oh, nice. Um, I just feel like that, because you will get some drip lines. So sanding it and then painting it black just really finishes it off. What are some other ways to finish the edges? You can just leave it bare and try and dome your resin. You can tape off the entire sides as long as you rip it off, you know, soon enough. Not longer than 24 hours, I'd say. How else can you finish the edges? Or, or you, can, uh, you can actually cut them on a table saw, just trim off the edge with the blade. I've done that too. They get really messy. But there's lots of different ways to finish the edges. Those are some of them. Thanks, Deanne. Okay. So there's some leftover resin here. Why don't I just start filling up the... Let's do it. Okay, we have the painting, we have the woodcraft. Yeah, let's see how the sand works. Here it goes. Someone got, uh, had a, um, I guess their piece was stuck in a mold. Is there a, is there a way to release it from the mold? Is there a good I way? I mean, your mold's gonna be ruined. Uh, and, yeah. and usually that has to do with the quality of the silicone. And you know the quality of the silicone by the amount of times you can reuse the mold. Mm. So if your mold's ripping and getting stuck, it's the silicone is either used too much or just a cheap silicone. And unfortunately, you're just gonna have to pick at it and pick at it, maybe eventually like sand it, get an exacto knife. There's no really easy way to get it off of there that I know of. Jasmine? Nope, that's about it. But make sure that you're not torching the mold. So once it comes in the mold, don't torch it because that can really that can break down the mold and cause it to stick. So lose the torch. Lose the torch. There you go. Sorry to hear about your mold not working. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks when that happens. I hate it. You I put know. so much like work into it and then it doesn't come out the mold. And you can't wait for Christmas morning to open the mold and see what you got and boo. Yep. That's life. That's life life. Lessons, <laughs> life lessons, lessons. With art resin. <laughs> Very cool. What you got going on here? So you're poking it through there? I'm just, I was just trying to hide some of the sand was kind of high up. Mm. Maybe That's you put some sick. like black ink in it? Black ink. I think you have it over there. Do you have any? Do you have the alcohol ink? No, I threw it all back in there. Oh, here it is. Jasmine with the black ink. There. That'll do her. My vase was round, so I had to piece the plastic together to make it fit. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what else there is. Sorry, I'm trying to, I get messages sometimes and I don't catch up. So what is the status of soccer coming back then? I actually don't know. I kind of read something quickly. Um, it was either this morning. Was it a Liverpool? Oh, yeah, hey, 
Whoever sent out the message about Liverpool, let us know what's going on with soccer. Yeah, in Canada, they care about hockey. Mm -hmm. What else do they care about? Which basketball, is coming back. Ba basketball here in North America, probably basketball is going to be the first sport to come back unless baseball can get their act together. Hold on, Sonia's saying, I don't use a torch, but after using mold for two months successfully, now I have this problem. Yeah, yeah just so use, mold is just mold. you just used the mold too many times. Yeah. yeah. It's had its time. So it's time to move on to a new mold, essentially. Yeah, bury it, have a little ceremony. <laughs> Light a candle, glass of wine, maybe. Watch your favorite show. It'll be okay. This resin just keeps going in here, even with the sand. Jill is offering a tip that a heat gun works great to take tape off the sides. The what? A heat gun's good to take the tape off the sides if it's oh. stuck on there a bit more. Yes, I remember hearing about that. I forgot about that. Boom. Okay. So I'll use the rest of this resin on these two forest gentlemen. Oh yes, the woodman. The woodman. And hmm, I should clean this up. No, I'm probably gonna cut this with a saw after. Stick with it. Stick with it. Sorry, uh one I love Julin. Oh, nice name. If your piece is stuck in the mold, put it in the freezer for a few hours mm -hmm. and you should be able to get it to release. Yeah, I remember that. Really? Yeah, I think I thought we talked about that before too. That's cool. I'm gonna write that down. That's a good one. So if your mold is Mold stuck in freezer. Okay, we'll try that. Good oh, idea. Yeah, yeah. need to know that. All right, you gentlemen. So again, I'm just trying to soak these guys so they're a solid chunk of plastic. Do you have plans for them? Uh, no. They just kept crumbling and crumbling. Pieces break off and they're so old. Who knows how long they've been in the woods for? Mm -hmm. Probably since like the beginning of time. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah, it's, it was when God was designing man. They also made tree men. Well, he was. Yeah, these were his. And then you gave them boogers. Boogers? <laughs> gross. Pretty little jokes. People are asking, or maybe one person, uh, about workshops. Uh, have we ought to thought, ever thought about doing workshops? Have we thought about it? There's lots of good workshops out there, and I don't think we're the ones to do it. Um, we've never really thought about doing workshops. I don't know. I know we have a video up on how to run your own workshop, um, if yes. you're interested. So we do we have... have art resin workshops. We did, yep. we did a video on how to run an art resin workshop. So lots and lots of art stores do that. Mm -hmm. Because if people can just try using resin then and, and get past it, you know, then usually they get hooked on it. They're like, oh, I can resin everything. So yes, we have a great, a whole page on that actually, on, with a video. Um, we, should, we should create some like documents too. Do you have a blog? Probably. We might have, we might have a blog, we probably have a blog on that too. We're gonna look at that, but yes, we do have some info. Um, workshop. I should do next time, we'll have a laptop. And so any other sometimes topics come up, we can show people where to go and search for wow. answers. We need someone sitting in the corner with the, like, on the computer. That's right. Okay. Okay, so what have we done today? We did the bottom of the Petri with Jazz. We did our wooden faces. We did the wood crack. We we're going to talk about jewelry bit blanks and resin this piece. And that's the whole day today. Um, what's that? The bottom the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Debbie had a major exothermic reaction where mm. things started to smoke. It was way too thick. Probably yeah. way too thick. Mm. Yeah, that's, I'm scared that's what's going to happen with um, these samples that we made here. Like most likely, because this is art resin, this is going to get really, really hot. And uh, I don't know if it'll smoke, but it'll probably, it'll probably discolor a little bit. We'll see. We should probably dump them now. Think so? I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Mm. It looks like mid-June we're going to get some soccer and... Uh, mid-June. I love Julin, sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly, but mm. is asking about uh, respiratory masks. Do we, need to, do we need to wear them? For COVID or for... No, oh, for here, for resin I'm guessing. Well, there's no VOCs, which means there's no fumes coming up and we're in a big enough area that there's lots of ventilation, so we're safe by... Uh, 
all the information that we have and knowing what the ingredients are. It is safe yeah. to use. And we Absolutely. Sell it, we get that, so we can sell it into education so that it's being used in classroom settings um, by students and stuff. So yeah, that was when we created our resin, that was one of the main, main focuses is safe. Because we didn't, it's not worth it otherwise. I don't want to use anything. That's right. And I remember, yeah, Dave and Rebecca, it's kind of cool in your story. You guys had a checklist as to what mm. your resin that you guys were creating had to... Uh, the checklist, right? And it yeah, was just, checklist. it was a great checklist and everything, once it got ticked off, and you guys released art resin, here we are. So I got tons of resin on my hands. So this stuff, Gojo, you find in mechanic shops for getting grease off of your hands and you do it dry. So it, rub it on, it's got some like pumice, is that what it's called in it? A little pumice. pumice. It's got like an exfoliant in it. So exfoliant. it rubs it right off. Yeah, and somehow it just gets it off of there. And then just do this. That's how you get, that's the best way that I've found to get resin off of my hands. And oh. then soak in water to get the residue, but. Oh, Jill, this is our secret weapon. This thing is like the greatest thing in the entire world. It's just a baker's, a baker's rack, guys. Yeah. And uh, with trays, so that every project that we do, we put it onto a tray, it's put it wheels. in the rack. It's on, Dave loves everything on wheels. And trays, yeah. just work right on it and put your it. projects, put it in there, and then seal it up. You can zip it up, zip up the plastic coat, cover, yeah. protect it, and bada boom. Because we often, many times, do multiple projects and whatnot. Jasmine does tons usually, and we just put it in the racks, let them cure. Yeah. Come back the next day, it's dust free. Dust free. Okay, Jazz, you want to talk about those? Yep. yep. And, and then, then if you get the bugs ready, then I'll do this. After. Yes. yes. Okay, okay, cool. Bed bugs? No, Julie. No, no. <laughs> Although we could embed them. Okay, so. Okay, what we got here? All right. So this right here is more or less a jewelry blank. So what this is is this is little tiny pieces of wood, um, kind of set in resin. So that's what people kind of like to do to make little jewelry pieces out of. So the process you can see here is you start with these little pieces of scrap wood, just whatever, it doesn't have to be fancy, or it could be quite fancy. Anyway, you put them in, and then you pour resin on, you let it cure. So then the next day you pop it out and you'll have something that looks like this. So you see the, the wood is suspended in there. And then I take a, just a Dremel, and I, I did this in just about 20 minutes before we started. So I wouldn't probably call this one finished, but you kind of grind a shape out of it, whatever shape you want. Say you want it to be like a little circular pendant, say you want it to be a little teardrop. You're just gonna shape that with your, with either just sandpaper or a little Dremel or whatever you want. It's a lathe as well, I've seen people. You put it on a lathe. Um, sometimes people have like those jewelry grinders, like a jewelry polisher, you can put it right up to it and just zip it off. Anyway, Bzz. exactly. <laughs> so once you have this little piece, there's kind of two options that you can go from there. Good job, Debbie. Let's keep going. You can either polish it. You can, so starting with like a rough sandpaper and working your way up to like a very fine sandpaper with some like car wax and stuff and make it all shiny. Or you can just take a little bit of red and then, and like rub it over the top to make it shiny again. And then pop a little hole and that'll be your like little necklace, however you want it to look. But I can show you how I do it from the beginning. Gloves. Gloves. Keep your hands protected. So this is just like scrap wood we had laying around. You can see here, there's some big pieces, there's some little pieces. I kind of just smashed it up with a chisel and a hammer, um, whatever we had around. So I put the little scraps in here, just like this. It doesn't super matter how they look because it's more about how you shape the thing in the end and where the cross section comes from. And of course you can get your own molds as well, different shapes. Oh yeah, use any kind of shapes you want. Just, I mean, look at our molds where I could have put in a little square one, could have done a bigger one like this. Could have done anything, really. So you just stick it in there and then here's a bit of resin that I mixed up. I'm just gonna do clear for this one. Okay. We're just gonna pour it in. So it covers the wood. Yeah. And the wood pieces might float up, but that's okay. You 
can either like shove them down as they keep going or see this one floated up, but it's not gonna really matter. Same with this one, it floated up as well, but as you sand it down and you finish it off, it's gonna, it won't matter if it floated or not. Uh, where do we get these molds? Like, I think most things are on Amazon. These are from Amazon. They're like little candy molds, I think they're called. Yeah, and then we have our own molds as well that are uh, this shape here. We have available on our website. And you can make your own as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with silicone. Yeah, you can make your own silicone molds. See, and it, it doesn't have to be like one piece of wood perfectly shaped. It can be all these like little ones here. It'll be interesting once you kind of sand it down the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. So mix those a bit more later for that one. But anyway, so there you go. And then when you pop these out the next day, they'll look like this. You sand it down, it looks like this. And then you could take some of our mixed up resin here. And you can see that it's gonna become very clear and shiny just by adding a new layer of resin. Yeah, because once you mold it, it scratches it up, makes yeah. it all so then, messy and nasty looking. But then you add a little bit of resin, just a little small coating, and bada boom, the shine is back. See, then you can see all the way down into it. So that's kind of neat. Obviously, there's more crafty ways to do this, and you can get all different kinds of effects by the different ways you put the wood in and how much you want to polish it and shape it and just... Really, you can go wild, but that's how you do it. There you go. Go wild, everybody. Uh, and there is a video someone asked about how to make molds. We do have a video up online. I think there's a short one on just uh, using silicone and acetate. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's many different ways. Good question. Oh, do you have a question? Yeah, totally. Okay. I just wanted to... Oh, I love this. So what do we have? Clear resin? So this one is, if you guys have been here for the past few weeks, we're building this pyramid. Started with, what do we have, David? Gold leaf and then flowers, dried in silica sand. And now we just got a clear thing of resin. Cool, and what, are you gonna stop there? Is there gonna be another one after that? No, we're gonna keep going. Going all the way to the top? Oh man, it's gonna be so cool. Yep, stay tuned. Stay tuned, week by week. Okay, thanks Jazz. Jazz, that was awesome. Boom. That was Jazz and with Jasmine. And now we're back to the doing it with Dave. Doing it with Dave. <laughs> So one interesting thing about this piece, okay. um, this where it's pink used to be white, but it was uh, oil paint that I didn't let dry long enough and then resined and it turned pink. And it's not only this piece that I did it on, it's some other pieces. The white turns pink if you don't let all the oil dry. But I kind of think it looks nice. At first I was angry, then I was sad. And what's the next stage? Betrayed. Betrayed. <laughs> he bargained. <laughs> he bargained. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to resin this one and then I'm actually sending it to my brother in Victoria because it, it reminds me of him for some reason. All right. He's in Victoria just going about his business. I guess restaurants are going. Hello, St. Helens, UK. Nice. UK. Hello. Welcome. The UK. Welcome to Canada. A beautiful day. It's supposed to feel like 41 today. What? Oh, really? Yeah. Ugh. I know, my chickens are just sitting in the forest. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, Dave has chickens. Oh, I love my chickens. I have six chickens, yeah. Nice. Six nice chickens. Six eggs a day. Companionship. What else do you have chickens? Um... Milk? No. No. <laughs> Besides nuggets? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. We love oh, the chickens. Something. What are you going to do with chickens in the winter? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, hey, Maria's got 10 chickens. Oh, Maria, what are you doing with your chickens in the winter? Or do you live somewhere that's not like cool? I don't know what to do. Maria, help me. I don't want to kill them, but I can't keep them all winter. I'm just going to coat this thing quickly, too. Oh, more resin tonight for Carol in Quebec City. Yeah, baby. Or Montreal, sorry, Montreal, Quebec. So, this was just something from the dollar store, actually. And I'm just going to do this to make it waterproof. Ah. I don't care if it's super pretty and super smooth. 
She's in Schoenberg, Maria with the 10 chickens. Where's Schoenberg? Schoenberg they're they're fine. Schoenberg. Schoenberg, is that in Germany? Schoenberg, Germany, I think. Bada boom. Okay. Kaladin. Oh, Kaladin, Lupo, nice. She says, just, just, they'll be fine, just feed them and water them. All winter long? Really? Don't I have to put them somewhere warm? I don't know. Okay. King City. I know. So I'm just gonna, uh, on my edges, I'm just gonna rub the resin into the, the sides. And okay. And torch it, get rid of the bubbles. We'll get that money, that beautiful torching shot. Yes. The bubble popping is usually the favorite spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Favorite part. And we got a torch right here. Can you touch the back of my posters as well? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to clip on this flame spreader. Okay. I'd like to say that I invented this, but I didn't. We copied someone. I couldn't find it for sale anywhere, but I bought it like 10 years ago, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So we got the name. I hope there's not like a patent or something. Do you think a torch or a heat gun works best? Torch, hands down. Yeah, there is no debate here. The no torch is the here. best way. It's direct, it doesn't move the resin around. It is awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can get cordless heat guns, I'm sure, but when I was using them, I'd have to hold the cord around. And it just doesn't get as hot. It literally doesn't get as hot. Is that true? I think it like- Aw, sorry, Maria. Hot, there's more sustained heat, so a lot of people who call me on the phone tell me they have like a spider web pattern happening over their resin and I ask them like did you use a torch gun and usually or not a torch gun, a heat gun. So if it's a heat gun, you'll get this cracky spider web pattern a lot of times and that's just because it's unevenly heated. Parts of the resin have had an exothermic reaction, so it's like kind of curving in like tectonic plates almost. So that's that's why we always use the torch instead of the heat gun. Boom. Because of the tectonic plates. Because of tectonic plates <laughs> and the uh, the bubonic, uh, whatever you were talking about earlier. I know, you, you used some really big words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's good. It has a whole other level to this. It's great, yeah. I don't know where it's like that. We're seeing intelligence here. That's good. Okay. Okay, Jeff, do you want to get a good angle of these? Uh, the boobles? Yes, I do. For the million dollar Let's shot. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I got some good ones right. I'm on the black, where the black starts right. So this yeah. line here, I got right this. Oh. All right. Spot. Yeah. Turn on the gas. Here we go. Oh yeah. Set up somewhere else. Wow. Go ahead, right where the all yeah, area? all in that area. What? What? Okay, go ahead. Gone. Look at that. Crystal clear. Back here, yeah, yeah so now it comes this area. So good. Resin, you're going to torch shut. I don't know why. Crystal clear. From scratchy to shiny. Scratchy to shiny. Did you So what's that? So I just wiped this down with water and alcohol to get the dust off of it. So it's sanded, yeah. So it's sanded. Now you see the cloud coming back because it's all dusty. This is just drying off. Mhm. Mm yeah. So it'll get all sandy again. Do you think we should do a bit more in there before we do the final coat? Mm, maybe. I think it was good to sand it off anyway. But you can still see how it goes shiny. Yep. Alright. So this is all scratchy. I'm sanding. But don't fear. Alright, resin makes it all okay. Get the color back. Scratches are gone. Clarity returns. Everything is okay. Hmm. Everything is okay. Oh, 
Okay. Every little thing. We're gonna be alright. I have some resin mixed up to do those bugs. If you want. Yeah, why don't you just do an intro to like, yeah. setting up the bugs? Yeah, like I can only do the first um, little bit. Okay, so that's all that we have to do today besides preparing bugs for embedding in resin, which we'll do in a moment. But thank you for coming out again. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and we'll address them next week, Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Nice. Uh, Julie was asking where to get a piece of wood like that. I mean, I guess you're sure. Just look for a wood store. Kind of near, yeah. a lot, where else? I mean, you can look online, a lot of places. Jazz actually, online, I know on Facebook, you can punch into their marketplaces. Yeah, I've never bought wood online before. No? You can like find like flea markets near you. Mm, yes. That's really good for wood. Um, sometimes there's mills in your town, like wood mills in your town, and they'll have like off cuts because they want straight lumber. So they'll have funky looking wood that they'll sometimes sell you for cheap. Um, those, are, those are my two go-to places. Uh, Maria, contact Tracy here at Art Resin for any kind of potential discounts depending on volume purchase. And at the same time, someone was asking, g -g 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 repeat torching. Is uh, it, uh, do you have to repeat torch? No, I never do. Sometimes with wood, because the wood will breathe and we'll get bubbles, right? Yeah. Like if you look at this piece, are there any bubbles? This is a wood piece. And like wood off gases, you sometimes get bubbles and you'd sand and do it again. Um, but this piece of wood I got just at, I live in a kind of small town and there's a local hardware store. Boom. And they have tons and tons of wood, just like a local hardware store as opposed to a big box hardware store. I've seen them in a number of those. You're right, probably like in more remote areas, right? Smaller towns, they have mm. wood for sale and stuff. So oh, yeah, that's yeah. probably your best bet. It's actually not hard to find because it's such a common thing that people are mm. doing right now. It's big, river tables, tables, coffee tables, all that stuff. Yeah, charcuterie boards. Where can you buy in the UK? By what? Dart resin. Hmm. Oh no, I didn't get to say bye. Oh, are we back? Are we live? The counters, uh, I don't know. We might've had internet problems there, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, I did see one of the questions in there. Was, that was a question about workshop discounts or something. Oh, yes. I think there is workshop pricing. Go to artresin.com slash application. There's just an application form for that. Is humidity really bad for our resin? It's really yeah, I mean, I think only if you're like, it, it's got to be so humid that it's like forming water on things. Mm -hmm. So like normal, within ranges of normal humidity, you don't have to worry. But I don't think you ever have to worry about humidity unless you're in a jungle in Costa Rica and like a hut doing it, maybe. <laughs> okay, guys. What okay. you working on? So... The first step to preparing. Oh, yeah. Okay, you you too, colors. Julie. Stay safe. So these, I absolutely love these. Are little bugs that you can kind of get or collect. They're not alive, but I. This one's like a swallowtail, and this is a interesting stag beetle. Ugh. So you can have them like this, or you can preserve them in resin. So. The first thing to do to prepare to do this is to clean your mold up. Um, I just use alcohol or water, whatever. I'm gonna have this little one be open. And then, so the first thing I do, we're gonna put the stag beetle in here. So you just pour a little bit of resin in. Oh, um, we cut off as to where we can buy their product in the UK. So yeah, online. Yeah, artresin.co.uk. Or just go to artresin.com and it'll direct you right to that site. Or on Amazon if you prefer. Boom. So just gonna pour a little tiny layer in here like that. Oh nice, so you're creating a bed for the bugs. Yes, it's a, oh, it is a bed bug. Oh, uh, wow, everything just went full circle. <laughs> so you can take your marker. He's not very fragile, which is nice. Oh. So this guy doesn't need to be like, uh, nothing needs to happen to him because he's got this nice hard shell on. You don't need to seal it. You don't need to seal him, he's already, Kind of good to go, so I'm gonna set him right. Or she, he or she. He or she. That's true. I actually think he has to be a male because I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. the female beetles don't have these big. Really? Yeah, because these are for hanging on to the lady beetle. Really? Yeah. MJ is dying to know about the slow curing project. Oh, me too. <laughs> Stay tuned. 
So there, he kind of, he's just sitting in there. Nothing's really going on. So I don't want to cover him because he might float. So I'm just going to leave him like this until the resin like gels up, maybe three or four hours. And then I'm going to kind of cover him the rest of the way or cover him like a third of the way and let that set, depending on how thick he ends up having to be. Gotcha. I kind of just let him sit there and then we can do prep the butterfly. So same thing, I cleaned this mold out just a second ago. So I'm going to put a little layer. I think that mold, you are searching for cake. Yeah, this is a cake mold. It came yeah. with like a bunch of other sizes because it was for a tiered cake. Oh yeah. So, so cake molds are fantastic for this yeah. stuff. Hey Melody. See, this is looks like the top layer almost, right? Where you have the man and husband and wife on top there. Uh, no, I had like little tiny ones. This really? Was, like, yeah, ah. it was like maybe about this big and had a little wee one on top. Like, you can definitely get much bigger ones. Can you mix sand and resin? Yeah. Yes. Oh, let's do it right now. We got extra resin. Yeah. And, pour it the mold. and we have sand on the table. Boom. Meant to be. So. Yeah, how do you prepare butterflies? I think, so this is kind of an experiment, but I believe, so I put a butterfly in resin before and it kind of soaked into the wings and made them like translucent. So I'm going to just go out into the garage with some clear spray paint or do you want to come? I can come. Yeah. Come on. All right, we're, we're coming. Spray paint on the butterfly. Clear spray paint. Yeah. Clear spray paint. And what are we doing that for again? Sorry. Oh, we're going to seal the butterfly so that it doesn't soak up water. Uh, what kind of spray paint you have. It's just anything clear. Sometimes I use Krylon, sometimes oh, I use this. There's our warehouse. Whoa. All the boxes lovingly stacked. This is like our me. small warehouse. We got the <laughs> giant one in down in Texas. All right, so maybe move the camera a little bit. Yeah, I'll back it up. Here we go. Here we go from a good distance. Give it a little bit of a... There you go. Oh, probably want to let that dry a moment. And might do a few more layers. And do you have to do the backside as well, I guess, obviously? Huh, I don't know if we need to do the backside. I guess we could. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. So when this guy was alive, when he was sitting upright with his wings together, he would look brown. And when he flies away, he would look blue. Wow. Nature, right? Nature. So. Oh, we're going to be doing some... Cutting too, we're going to cut off uh, the candy dish. If, you, if anybody was hanging out with us at the beginning, we're going to cut off that Skittle dish. We're going to create some edging. Should be fun. Alright, so nice. we're going to just let this guy dry for maybe an hour or two. And then I'm going to put it in just like how I did the steak beetle, just kind of gently lay it down. The one thing to remember though is when you're going to put the butterfly in, air can get trapped under the wings. So you're going to want to gently push down on the wings to make sure you don't get any air stuck in the bottom. Right. Uh, we are in Waterdown, just outside Hamilton. All right, you're just in time. Boom. I have mixed resin, I have a bag of sand, and a cradle board canvas. So this is just a canvas that has a lip around the edge, so that the resin stays right inside of it. I'm going to take this stick, a tiny bit of pink on it, that's okay. And mix the sand and the resin. It's not uncommon to mix sand, pebbles, any type of aggregate, even crushed up glass. Mix that into resin and use it for floors or, surface or surfaces, especially if you want them to be non-slippery surfaces. So this is quite common, mixing aggregates in. Some people have even taken like the popular color, like say, what's that uh, vodka that's in a clear bottle with has some blue on it, polar bear? Uh... Well, it's a very distinctive color bottle and they broke that up and like did a whole countertop out of it and you just knew it was that brand of vodka. Is it polar ice? Glass. Maybe polar ice, yeah. Okay. Is it Grey Goose? Grey no, goose? no, that's the one that's got a goose on it. Oh. Anyway, but you can mix, the point is that you can mix any type of aggregate into the resin. And then it does also have some surfaces besides just giving cool textures. There you go. 
So I'm not going to be able to save this for mixing. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see what happens. And, and I'm just going to spread this out by tipping it. Patron. Patron is... Patron. Isn't that uh, tequila? But maybe it's a very distinctive bottle. resin here but I think that looks kind of cool like this might end up being like the base of a painting you know mm -hmm. sometimes people mix in sand like that to the bottom of their ocean painting yes the ocean like the one on the wall up there very good point yeah so sometimes people if they're doing yeah ocean art obviously a lot will put a base of sand uh, at the bottom to create this the beach area sky vodka sky vodka I think, but I still think polar is, I think polar, polar, or polar ice. ice, I think polar ice is the vodka that you're talking about with the polar bear on it. Maybe. Anyways, All right, can everyone. you write in the sand like you would on the beach, not when it's cured? Oh, well, you would be able to, if you waited long enough, like if you waited maybe 30 or 40 minutes, it would be at a stage where um, if you were to move it around, it's not, it's, it's a lot thicker, so it won't go back into place, but I'll put on another glove and just see what happens. Like, I don't see why not. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a big heart in the sand. No problem, Zahid. And we'll see what happens. So I'm kind of pushing the sand to the side. I think I don't think it's gonna stay. Yeah, it hasn't. Not enough time has happened. You need to get it to more of a gel state, which could be anywhere from 45 to probably two hours, even, right, Dave? Yeah, but we might still be able to see something, I don't know. But, see what happens, that'll be cool if it kind of That is cool. That's a cool, if it, what a good keepsake that would be, or something after a trip, or yeah, uh, the actual sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like that I used the pink. Like that I know, really nice. this is actually really Look at nice. This. See, okay, I will say this, to blow sunshine a little bit for towards Dave is Dave will just wow. kind of go with things, right? Where a lot of yeah. times your people, will, I will overthink things. <laughs> Dave will just do things and see happy accidents or just happy things happen when you just go with it, right? Happy things happen. Cause you got now a pink sandy kind of thing. There is a heart for me. This is really cool. This, yeah, we, let's not touch this. Let's see what happens. All right, let's sign off. Unless there's any other questions. Um, thanks for watching everyone. Oh, Julie, are you still there, Julie? Give her, give me one minute for Julie was asking a question about some bubbles. bubbles. Yeah, bubbles and rocks. Things. Julie, if you are not there right now and you do end up watching the end of this, send us a message, write it in the, on the YouTube once this video is posted and Dave and I will get back to you. Yeah. Oh, there she is, Julie, you, do you wanna write it in the message or do you wanna, we can try and do this live if you, well, go for it. Let's show me these rocks here. Talk about oh yeah, we did kindness rocks, yeah, the video just went out. We were just showing how, you know, if you keep a uh, painted rock outside, it'll fade like that, or it'll pick off like that. So what we were just showing is different methods to get a perfectly resin rock so that it just lasts a heck of a lot longer when you put it out in the sun. Exactly. And this guy here is just, did it. So Dave would uh, just do the one side and then just resin another thin on the other side and you're all good. Looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dave, yeah. So all these different things. It's cute. But yeah, uh, okay, I resin my rock for sale. Followed Dave's tutorial. Mm -hmm. All right, this is Julie. Julie is talking to us. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what's coming. So she has a set rock for sale and she followed a tutorial, I guess. So we'll see what uh, what question is. Uh, I think it's to do with bubbles though, bubbles off the rock. But I still got dimples even after torching, so she has really? to redo it. Oh, I wonder if there's some oil on your rock or something. Maybe you, should, maybe you have to clean the rock with soap and water first. If you're getting dimples, it means there's something on the surface that's pushing the resin away, right? She's asking if she has to redo it if she's got dimples. I mean, that's- if you want to redo it? I mean, it's up to you if it looks really bad or not. If you want to redo it, maybe take some sandpaper, sand the whole thing and, and do it again. That's the best thing is you want to, yeah, why do we sand then, Dave? Yeah, if you, weren't, if you were to put another coat of resin on top of this and not sand, 
there is a chance that it could separate over time. I had that happen to a couple paintings of mine. So now I, if I do a second coat, always just do a light sanding to give the next coat something to grab onto, and then you're good for all of eternity. Yeah, and don't worry about it looking scuffed up and everything because the resin will make it clear yeah. and perfect. It'll stick to it, and, uh, and it levels out, it self-levels, so any of those dimples should be filled in, and you'll be good to go. That's right. So just, yeah, make sure it's wiped down, don't have any moisturizer on your hands or anything like that, and you should be good, right? That's right. Cool. Hopefully that answers your question, Julie. Uh, with a oh, specific sand chipper grip, grit. I mean, I always just, I usually just buy a pack of 80 sand. It just seems like to be kind of like not too, not too mild, not too coarse, and I can just use it for everything. So perfect. That 80 is just fine. Yeah. There you go. Okay, thanks everyone for for uh, watching again and your questions and participation. This is a lot of fun, and we're learning new things as we go all together. So until next Wednesday at one o'clock. Stay safe. Get together with uh, your your family and your friends now. I think if you're if you're, you're safely alive. social distancing. <laughs> God, I know. This will be over one day soon. Eighty grit, eighty grit, Julie. Eighty grit, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna get first thing I'm gonna do is get some sushi <laughs> at a table where they serve you. Ugh. Yeah. All right. No problem, Julie, and everybody else. Yeah, have a great week, everyone. Jazz? Bye. Dave? See you later. Later, everybody.